Hello, you two. What follows is an actual conversation on PM between me and a Christian creationist. The questions are rather typical, and so um, I'm trying to um, keep this as uh, as much um, as accurate as possible. So I'm reading it. So it'll be a little distracting. I hope you hope you don't mind. I've been watching Kent Hovind videos, and I got some questions for you. First off, evolution is a religious world view, not supported by science, scripture, popular opinion, or common sense. So there. The first step out of the starting gate is a stumble. Evolution is not a worldview to begin with, but a theory, defined as a structure of facts derived from evidence. Of course, it is not supported by Scripture. Scripture is nothing but unsupported assertions of uh, pre-civilized people with no relationship to reality. Okay, what about cosmic evolution, the origin of time, space, and matter? or your, your stupid Big Bang Theory. When Kent Hovind lectures on evolution, he's lecturing on organic evolution. His throwing in terms like cosmic evolution is deliberately and dishonestly misleading his audience to think that cosmology or the Big Bang Theory have anything to do with organic evolution. They do not. Okay, then chemical evolution, the origin of higher elements from hydrogen. Again, Kent Hovind outlines several kinds of evolution. He does this knowing that his audiences are ignorant and will believe, as he wants them to, that changes in chemistry are related to organic evolution. They are not. I got you this time. Stellar evolution. I'm talking about the planetary evolution of stars and planets. Again, changes in planets over time may be referred to by astronomers and astrophysicists in terms of evolution because, by a loose definition, any change over time may be called an evolution. Again, Hovind uses these terms to muddy the waters and to impress gullible audiences with terminology he doesn't even know how to use properly. All right then, organic evolution, the origin of life. This is two things confused as one. Organic evolution is the change over vast amounts of time from simple to more complex forms. Evolution has absolutely nothing to do with the origin of life. The origin of life, as described by scientists, is called abiogenesis. Evolution began after life existed. Hovind knows that. That's why I call him a liar. Okay, what about macroevolution, changing from one kind to another, or microevolution, variations within kinds? Wrong again. Microevolution, if it is ever proper to use that term, is merely change that takes place rapidly enough for it to be witnessed, such as the mutation of viruses and bacteria that can be observed under an electron microscope. Macroevolution is simply the divergence of species that is too slow to be observed in real time, but is inferred from fossil evidence. All right, then where does matter come from? Science can't tell you that, but the Bible does. Any honest scientist will tell you that he or she doesn't know. But no scientist worthy of the name will tell you that whatever they don't know is God. You can make that leap. Faith is for people without knowledge. With belief, you don't need facts. Nobody knows how life can get started from non-living material. That's right, if you mean scientists. 
But you and the others who read your ancient holy book know, don't you? It's all right there. Believe it or else. The universe is run by laws like gravity and stuff. Now, who made these laws, hmm? These laws never did evolve. They're not laws in the sense that someone set down a rule that has to be followed. When we speak of the law of gravity or centrifugal force or inertia, we may, as well, may often say theory of gravity, etc. The terms are used interchangeably because theory doesn't mean a guess but a structure that identifies the observation of how things work. Uh, when we speak of the law of gravity, we merely describe how the attraction of lesser to greater mass has been observed to work, not how some being said they must work and so they do under penalty. Australian Aborigines were killed, or treated like animals, and even killed in the 1800s in the name of evolution. Now, this is ridiculous. First, the book On Origin of Species wasn't published until 1859, and outside of the scientific community, almost no one um, even heard of evolution until the 20th century. Aborigines were killed in the name of progress of European white people, just as aboriginal people on the North American continent were decimated in the name of manifest destiny. In, either, in neither case did that horror have anything to do with evolution. On May 21, 1998, 15-year-old Kip Kinkle, a student at Thurston High School, allegedly entered the school cafeteria and fired more than 50 rounds from a semi-automatic rifle. 26 students were injured, two were killed. Later, the bodies of Kip's parents were found in his home when he, and he was then arrested and taken to police headquarters where he attempted to murder a detective during his initial questioning. He was a very strong believer in evolution. What has his belief in evolution to do with his crime? I also accept the theory of evolution, and I have for at least 50 years. I have never killed anybody. My belief that life evolved from simple to complex has nothing to do with my desire to be a good and moral citizen. I've been trying very hard up to this point to simply disabuse you of ideas poorly thought out and ignorance that you have accepted, which is very widespread. I don't want to call you an idiot, but when you draw such a conclusion, there are only two possibilities that occur to me. One, you are merely abysmally ignorant, or two, you are deliberately dishonest. Which is it? There was nearly a 1,000% increase in violent crimes since people began teaching evolution in schools. Sexually submitted disease has gone up about 385%. Divorce rates gone up. Birth rates for unwed girls gone up about 100%. Teen suicide rate has gone crazy. Okay, I see now that it's number one abysmally ignorant. It has been my experience that when people quote percentages like your 1,000% increase in violent crimes and they don't give a citation, they pull the numbers out of their nether regions. And given that you think there is a relationship between acceptance of evolution and violent crime, unwed parenting, teen suicide, and sexually transmitted disease, I have to assume that you just withdrew your head from the same place. Could it be that this evolution theory is to blame? The answer is simple and uh, simple enough even for you to understand. No. Now, the first thing I should have told you was that if you're looking for facts in any Kent Hovind lecture, and yes, I have seen them, you might just as well be looking for diamonds in a dung heap. <laughs>